Today we're going to talk about the five things I would never do as a working artist. Let's see if you agree with me. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here. I'm going to do a TikTok trend because I'm never going to be on TikTok. What's happening there, in case you ever go to that little bit of a cesspool, is <laughs> I call it a cesspool. That's not right. Uh, let's start again. Joe McKenzie here. Uh, I'm going to do a trend that is happening on a different platform. And since I'm never going to go on that platform, I thought I would do it here. And what it is that people in professions are listing the five things that they would never do. And you get some really important information, especially from neuros neurosurgeons and doctors. This isn't going to be important information, but it is for me truthful. So these are the top five things that I would never do as an artist. Number five is to work with toxic materials. Now, you know, if you work in oils, for example, that you want to wear gloves and you want to have a ventilated space. Watercolor, it's not as uh, hazardous, of course, but I make sure that I don't eat around my area and also because um, I make sure I wash my hands really carefully afterwards because paint can get on my fingers and if I go to eat something then uh, it, it might transfer. As you can see, <laughs> paint, eat, paint, eat. <laughs> it's kind of the, the way things go around here. So that's number five. Number four thing that I would never do as an artist is to never try any new concepts or ideas. I think if you get stuck in a rut, you just paint the same paintings over and over again. That's great for some people, not for me. I like to try new things. Not necessarily new materials. I haven't been very open to new materials as much as I am to open to new concepts, trying, diff trying different things with the materials that I have. Number three, use a photo without permission. Oh gosh. And let me tell you a side story about this. Uh, I took a class once and the instructor gave us some photos. I made a mistake because what I did somewhere through the years, blah, 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 I mixed some of those photos in with some photos that I have taken of my own. And I didn't realize that one of her photos was in my stack. And so I posted a photo of this thing and uh, I got called out on it and rightfully so. So now when, I, when that happens, if I get instructions like that from somebody, rather than even labeling them or categorizing them, I just rip them up because I don't ever wanna make that mistake again. It's, it's really egregious, but I did make that mistake. I think I've been forgiven. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with I've been forgiven on that one. And it was an honest mistake. Uh, number two, copy another's work. Now I know we're all influenced by other people, but direct copying is a different thing. I know that in some schools, they'll use that as a teaching tool. You can go to museums, for example, and see people painting, and it can be a useful learning tool. But I have a friend who actually has someone copying her stroke per stroke. Oh boy, that is, uh, that really is annoying. Um, she has a style that might be easy to imitate. You know, in some ways, the more simple, or I should say the fewer strokes you have, it might be a little bit easier to copy. Or it's just a fine line between being influenced by somebody's work and copying it. But I think we all know the difference. It's one of those things like pornography. If, if, you, if you see it, you know it. That was maybe a really bad example. I don't know. And <laughs> my number one, my number thing, number one thing that I will never do as an artist is to lie about my process. I'm not going to keep up the myth that uh, I just sit at the easel and you know this thing just happens because that's not the way it happens for me. It's very planful. The other thing is I use tools. Of course I use gridding. Of course I use a projector. Of course I use different ways to enlarge what my, the work that I'm going to be making a painting of. Any way that you get to the end of the painting is a way to get to the end of the painting. So I never ever lie about that because I think if you lie about something, it implies that there's some shame involved. And I have, there's no shame in my game. I'm not doing anything that I feel shameful about. And even if you do use tools that help you enlarge, for example, that's, that's one part of the painting. You got a long, long road before you get to the end, end of a painting. 
And I know people don't talk about it much. You know, it's like this little bit of a shameful secret, but I visited quite a few professional artist studios. I'm not saying thousands, but more than a few, certainly more than a handful. And they all have these devices and uh, maybe they don't use them all the time, but it's a tool. And I just can't turn down the tool because when it comes to painting strategically, tools are really helpful. So those are my top five things that I would never do as an artist. And I'm wondering if you'll put in the comments underneath, what is one of your top things that you would never do as an artist? I wonder if they're the same as mine. So remember, keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel and tell, tell a friend about my YouTube channel or even more important, those of you who are watching, because there are so many people that watch us who do not subscribe. Oh, it is just like this many people watch and don't subscribe and this many people subscribe. I want you to subscribe, so please do. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll edit that at the beginning of this and save my top fives for after. That'd be a sneaky Pete thing to do, wouldn't it? All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.